All right, we're going to explore linear equations in a, in a little bit more detail. And we're going to explore them graphically and numerically. And what we're, what we're going to start with is a definition of linear equations. And we're going to write them first in this form. And so we have some number times x plus some number times y plus a constant. And for these, we can make a way of writing um, all the possible values of an equation and graphing it. But we're, we're, going, to, we're going to make these graphs noting that this is a line. in two variables. And so it would be nice if we knew two points. Because to define a line, we need two points. And so we're going to look for two special points. We're going to look for what are called intercepts. And so intercepts happen whenever we hit the x-axis and the y-axis. So in this case, there are two intercepts. This is the x-intercept, because I, it is touching the x-axis. And this is the y-intercept. Now notice what happens here. When I am on the x-intercept, I have some value for x, however far out I am here. But my y-value is 0. I have no height above the x-axis. And when I'm on the y-intercept, my x-value is 0. I have no distance away from the y-axis, and my value tells me where I am on the y-axis. And, and so th this has always been a weird thing for me um, to memorize, is the x-intercept happens when y equals 0, and the y-intercept happens when x equals 0. And this flipping of things, if, if I can flip something or reverse it, I'll tend to do it. What I tend to do is I tend to draw it. I tend to sketch off to the side, and I look at this thing and go, hey, that's where y is 0. I, I visually confirm it. And then I come over here and I go, hey, this is where x is 0, and visually confirm it. And so the intercepts can help us, it will give us an actually enough information to make our line. Because if I know my y-intercept and I know my x-intercept, I can connect them together and get my line. Right. And so these are some easy points to do. And what's nice about having things equal 0 is they're easy to substitute into equations. So let's look at an example here. Um, we're going to look at 3x plus 2y equals 6, or 3x plus 2y minus 6 equals 0. And so, 3x plus 2y equals 6. And so what we want to do is we want to find the intercepts. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to find the x-intercept. Let me scroll up so I'm not clashing information together. There's my x, y, my y axis. There's my x axis. I'll continue to label these. This is y. This is x. And so I want to find my x-intercept. That's where y equals 0. So if y equals 0, I rewrite this so that y equals 0. And that means the y part goes away. And I get 3x equals 6. And if I solve for x, that gives me 2. And so the x-intercept is here at 2. And now I want to find the y-intercept. And that's where x equals 0. So I do the same thing. I put 0 in for x. And so that part goes away. And I have 2y equals 6. 
or y equals 3. And that's up here. And I now have two points that I can use to find my line. Alright, so that's what I did by hand. Let's look at Desmos and see what it looks like on our web browser. So, switch over here. Go to our graphing calculator utility and I'm going to clear out what I have in there. So I'm going to get rid of these two. And I'm going to type in our equation 3x plus 2y equals 6. And I want to zoom in a bit so it looks like the graph we did. And notice there is my y intercept of 3, my x intercept of 2, and it's connected with the line. Very similar to what we did by hand. And so intercepts are useful ways of graphing a line. The lines might, might cross those areas. Well, another concept that comes with the idea of lines is how quickly a line changes. I've alluded to it in some of the other stuff that we've been doing, and I said we'd keep expanding out these concepts as we went. And I'm, I'm going to do some different things and we're going to, called slope. And slope is the change in the y direction divided by the change in the x direction. We can also say that if I have two points, it's the y value of the second point minus the y value of the first point divided by the x value of the second point minus the x value of the first point. And that's how much it rises over how much it runs. Let's look at a couple uh, of slopes. Now I'm not going to work on any special lines. I'm going to right now assume uh, or make it such that all the lines cross the origin for right now, just so we can compare slopes. Um, and we will expand our definition of lines, but I'm going to use this as a plotting point, both within here and later on in Desmos. And so the first thing we want to look at is, let's take, since this is going to be the origin, 0, 0. I'm going to, I'm going to take some point away from the origin. And so let me do my first point that I'm going to look at over here. So we'll say this is point 1, and it's going to be 3, 3. And we'll say point 2 down on this end is going to be, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, two. it's going to be at negative 2 comma negative 2. And so there's point 1 and point 2. So these can be connected by a line. And just imagine my drawing is better and this is a straight line. And so we're going to talk about the slope of this line. Now I'm going to take my two points. I could take any two points on here. Um, but I'm going to take the P1 and P2 points and I'm going to calculate the slope. So I'm going to say for, I'm going to M1, 2. So I'm going to talk about the slope between points 1 and point 2. And I'm going to say that my change in Y, so Y2 is, here's Y2, negative 2, minus y1, which is 3, over x2, which is minus 2, minus x1, which is 3. And that's going to give me minus 5 over minus 5, or a positive 1. 
And so po a positive slope gets bigger from left to right. And the slope of 1 actually cuts the x and y axis in half here. Right? It's the middle ground, a slope of 1. So let's come over here and do this on Desmos for a comparison. And so I have a slope of 1, so y equals x. And this is a special linear function. This is called the identity function because whatever I put in for x, I get the same thing back for y. And it divides the x and y equally. Notice how it runs through the, cuts the diagonals across all the squares there. And we're going to compare other slopes to, towards it. So let's, do, let's continue our comparisons here. All right, I'm going to take another point. I'm going to do blue to differentiate from the orange of this one. And I'm going to go 1 over in x. So P1 is 1 in x and 3 in y. And I'm going to have that come back through 0, 0. I'm going to use this as my second point. Oops, that's P1, P2, so this would be P3. And P4 would be 0, 0. So the slope from 3 to 4 is going to be 0, because that's the y value of P4, minus 3, because that's the y value of P1. And 0 minus 1, g equals negative 3 over negative 1, where this has a slope of 3. So let's look at what a slope of 3 looks like here. And so notice the line that we've created with this slope rises more quickly. It gets bigger more uh, faster right, as we go left to right. right. And we tend to talk left to right because that's the direction we read. And so the slope value determines how quickly it rises. And so positive slopes are rising in a positive direction. And 1 is the middle ground is larger. So if the slope gets bigger, these lines get steeper slopes. Well, that says I could probably do something. I could probably come over here. Well, let me do this on Desmos. Add this to our Desmos ones, and then we'll come over. And so we want to add the line y equals 3x. And see how we have the steeper slope here. And now we're going to, going to create um, one last slope. And then we'll, we'll um, look at what happens if um, we get negative slopes. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go 3 in x and up 1 in y. So we'll say point um, 5 is 3 in x, 1 in y. And again, since I'm comparing everything to 0, I'll also make this point 6. We'll keep using the zero here to be our other point, just so we can compare slopes. And so I'll come down here, and I'll go m5 to 6, because right, I'm comparing point 5 to 6. And so my y2 is 0, minus my y1. And my x2 minus my x1, which is negative 1 over negative 3, or 1 third. Oops, it's the wrong tool. And what I get here is the value of m. When m is greater than zero, it's a positive number. And the positive number talks about how steep it rises or runs. And so as m gets bigger, it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. If m equals 0, 
which I'm doing bright red here, then we get a horizontal line. Holding that in to show it over the axes. And so here we have lines from 0 to 3, and m can work all of its way up to infinity. And we actually say when, when we have a vertical line that m is undefined. And we'll see why in a second, but we'll just work our way through these. And so let's plot these on Desmos, and, and we can see the collection of these lines that we have where they're slopes. So, what was the other one? I had y equals one third x, and then the last one I had y equals zero. And so, there's my horizontal line has a slope of zero. I'm going to put zero x. As my slope gets bigger, okay, there's one third, there's a slope of one third, there's a slope of one, there's a slope of three. Now look, let's look what happens if my slopes are negative. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a negative sign in front of these slopes. So there's a negative one, there's a negative three, there's a negative one third. And so as my slopes get a negative sign, they decrease from left to right. But with the same thing, the negative one-third has the smaller rate of decrease, negative one is straight down the diagonals, and then negative three is this steeper decrease. So the absolute value of our slope tells us how big the change is, and the plus or minus tells us the direction. The slope becomes this useful way of talking about how our functions are, how our linear functions are changing. And so we also call slope the rate of change. And so we can say this is m is the slope, which is the change in y over the change in x, the rise over the run. Or we can say this whole thing is called the rate of change how y is changing compared to x, um, if, if we translate those words um, to mean. And so we can use the slope um, to find things about, about lines. So let's um, look at the example in the book. So we, uh, we have the point negative 3 comma negative 1 and negative 2 comma 4. So we have the point we have the point negative 3 comma, we'll call this P1, negative 3 comma negative 1, and negative 2 comma 4. And so these are two points on the line. Making sure these are visible. All right, good. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the slope. So the slope of the line between these two points is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is, well, here's y2, so that's 4 minus minus 1, because there's y1, over negative 2 minus negative 3. So 4 minus 1 is 5. And negative 2 minus minus 3 is 1. And so this has a slope of 5. Well, what does that look like? Well, let's, I'm going to use Desmos just to be neater than my handwriting for a second. But the same ideas will be here. So let's come here. And so I can do the point point was negative 3 comma negative 1. And so there's that point down there. And then negative 2, oops, negative 
two comma four. So my other point, negative two comma four, yeah, negative two comma four. And so I have my two points. Now, I guess our job here would be, how do I find the equation of the line that joins these two points? Because right? there's point one, there's point two. How, how, how can I join them? Well, let's look at what we need to make a line and then and use these two things together to do that. So that's going to be our goal. We'll come back to Desmos and see if we can join these two things with a line. And what we're going to talk about is what's called the slope-intercept form of a line. And the point intercept, or the point um, slope version of the line. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say, I cannot see my drawing screen yet. Hold on. Ah, there we go. Can you see this drawing yet? Hold on. If I have the y value as being unknown, this is my variable, I can do y minus one point is equal to m, the slope, times x minus the other point. This is called the point slope equation. And now what I'm going to do with the point slope equation is I'm going to take the slope I had here. So I'm going to go y minus y1 equals 5 times x minus x1. And I'm going to pick either point. And I think for me, I'm going to pick point 2. Right, this will work for either point one or point two. It'll work for both because um, both of these are on the same line. And so now I'm going to replace this into here, well, into the y value, and this into the x value. So I'm going to get y minus four, right? Because I'm taking this in and dropping it in for y one is equal to five times x minus minus two. So let's put all this together. I get y minus 4 is equal to 5x plus 2. Y is equal to 5x plus 6. And we will now look to see if that matches our graph of the line we were expecting to see when we did our slope here. here. Wait, I think I forgot. Let me look at my multiplication here. Ah, this 5 had to distribute. That's 10. And 10 plus 4 is 14. I know I did something wrong here. Am I in Desmos? No, I'm not in Desmos. I forgot my distribution. I do this all the time with these. And I was even reminding myself not to distribute when I was looking at this going, this is going to be a big number. And then and I jump the gun here, right? But if I distribute, 5 times x is 5x, five, 5 times 2 is 10, bring my 4 over, I get 5x plus 14. Then what happens because I'm worried about my graph. So let's switch over to the graph now. There we go. And so we're going to get y equals 5x plus 14. And look, it goes through those two points. And let's look at something else it did. Notice 14 is the y-intercept. And what's nice about 
this form of writing the equation of the line here is this tells me where it intercepts the y-axis because if x was 0 x part goes away and this tells me y equals 14 and so this number hanging out on the end is the y-intercept so the point slope equation lets us find any line and it'll simplify into this what we're going to call point intercept form or not point slope intercept form and so when y equals mx plus b that's the y-intercept and that's the slope so let's focus on this form now and make some make some lines out of that. Let me use the example in the book again. And we're going to look at 2x minus 4. So y equals 2x minus 4. This tells me that I cross the y-axis at y equals negative 4 and my rise over run is 2 over 1 so I could do a quick sketch here is down here at negative 4 because that's the y-intercept and I go up 2 and over 1 up 2 and over 1. And so this should be, well, let's see, I went from negative 4 to 2, negative 2, and 1. And so this should be 1, um, 2, comma 0. Right? And over here would be um, 1, comma, negative 2. Well, let's look at Desmos and see if we get a similar thing graphing this form. And notice how a large quantity of information is tagged in these two values. y equals 2x minus 4. I'm going to turn off this other one for right now. I'm going to turn off these points. I'm going to scroll down and look. I went from negative 4 to 1. Negative 2 and 1. Or I'm sorry, 1. So 0, negative 4, 1, negative 2, 2, 0, just like we did a short sketch of. And so th this visual information to map back to what our formulas are doing and having specific values in our formulas that are descriptive of what is happening is the tool that help helps make graphing a powerful way of talking about um, equations. And let's look at two special types of equations um, that we that we might see. So, or two special types of lines, and then we'll turn these into applications. And I've hinted at these before, so I'll draw these really quick here. So I'm gonna, so those are my axes in orange, and my equation is going to be in purple, pinkish purple. And so if we have a horizontal line where m equals 0, that means y is going to equal whatever this value is. And so for right now, we'll just call it a. And so notice, if my slope is 0 in the y equals mx, well, I guess I'll call it b to be consistent, b, mx plus b, then if the m is 0, this part goes away, and I'm just left with y equals b. Well, it's a straight line where the y value never changes, or this is a horizontal line. And so the slope is 0 in a horizontal line. Now I'm going to do another equation in bright yellow, and this is a vertical line. Now, a vertical line doesn't have a slope. And what is happening is that all the change is in the y direction. And so it would be like dividing by 0, right? If we were to do the m equals y 
2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I'll pick two points. I'll pick this point here and a point here. So we'll say this is, what is this? This is y equals 0. 0 comma whatever this x value is. Um, we'll say b. And then we'll come up here and we'll say this is 1 comma b. Right, I'm sorry, this is b comma 0. And this is b comma 1. We'll be specific. We'll be very specific. And so if I look at a slope of that, I get y2, so 1 minus 0, over b minus b. Or 1 divided by 0. But we can't divide by 0. Can't divide by 0. Can't divide by 0. And so we say this is undefined. And so vertical lines have undefined slopes. And they're written as x equals, and in this case, um, we called that b also, x equals b. And so that's why this made a square, because this was how many values out in the b here, and this is how many values out b in this direction. So I tried to make a little square with it. And so these are special lines that we get. A vertical line is x equals some number, and a horizontal line is y equals some number. Let's make these things do some work for us. We're going to talk about the slope as a rate of change. Let's see if... Okay, well, what happened here? You didn't get to see any of my lines. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to scroll back up, and I'll go over that in two seconds again. The software occasionally sticks on me, and we, it doesn't show it to me until, like, two ticks later. Um, so let me scroll back up here. All right, so I'm going to redo this here. So this is what I talked about. I talked about a vertical line and a horizontal line, and it didn't show up on my Desmos side. Um, so I'll put it over here. So what we're going to do here is I want to take all of the stuff and I'm going to bring it back over to Desmos. The idea is, is if the slope is equal to 0, then in y equals mx plus b, the mx part will be 0, and I get y equals b. And so I get this nice pink line over here that's always on B. And that's called a horizontal line. And the slope is 0 on a horizontal line. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0. Now a vertical line, so if I'm at B comma 0, if I look at a vertical line and I subtract two points, I'm going to take B comma 0 and B comma 1, I get a division by zero error. And so I would write this as x equals b, and that gives me a vertical line, because x is always the value of b along this line, but the slope is undefined. All right, let's play with this in applications. This is very useful. All, all, of, all of this ideas can help us do things, and we can do it by doing things as a rate of change. We can talk about how things change over a given period of time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up some data. And we're going to use the data to um, we're going to use the data to make an equation, a predictive equation. Let's see if I can get this data to come up here. Bear with me. I want to make sure it's visible. So I'm looking at the visible screen here. fit within the things here. This is the data I want to see here. There we go. Try to make this smaller so we can see it. Perfect. 
All right, so the lines in these graphs show the percentage of American men and women, 20 to 24, who were married from 1970 through 2010. Find the slope of the line segment representing women and describe what this represents. So if we look at this here, this blue line is women, and our x values are the years. And so what we can do is we can take these points. We can take 1970, 65% for women, and we take 2010 and 21% from women. So we can turn these into points and we can talk about, well, the rise over run. Well, the rise is the change in percent. And the run is years. And so if we turn that into mathematical language, we're going to talk about the change in percent per year. So we're going to take these two values, 1970-65 and 2010-21. Let's come back over to our blackboard here. So we'll have, we have 1970, we had 65%, and that'll be 0.1, and 0.2 will be 2010, and we had 21%. And so we're going to talk about this as a rate of change. So we're going to say the slope is my change in y over my change in x. Or 2010 minus 1970 over 21 minus 65. And so you see 2010 minus 1970 is what? Negative or positive 40. Right? It's 40 years has passed. Over negative 44. Calculator out here. Oh, did I flip these? Wait. Did I just do my x values over my y values? Double check. Yeah, I did do my x values over my y values. All right, this is why units are a good thing to double check. Let me just clear back here and go change in y, let me actually write y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If you ever have me in class, I do things without my notes, hoping to make mistakes so my class corrects them, um, and we see how to fix them. Making a mistake and how to fix it is sometimes just as important as knowing the steps coming through. And so what I noticed is I wanted to talk about my units, because we're talking about, when I said this, the percent per year. And so when I went to read those numbers back, I started to say the units, and I noticed my units were messed up. And so to fix that, I'm making sure that I don't jump right to this y step like I did before. And so that's the correction. So now if I look at my y2 values, well, that's y2, 21. And this is x2. And you will get this warning with me. If I can flip something, I'll flip it. But I'll leave the mistake in so we can learn how to fix our mistakes. Because we all make mistakes. Let's get negative 11 over 10, or negative 1.1, is our slope. And what this is now, is this is a rate of change. It says we're losing 1.1% every year. And so, the, so lines can be a way of talking about how things actually change. We've taken something that's not, and let me get back to this here, that isn't a, right, this isn't a distance or a geometry. I don't make, right, this line in this graph isn't something I draw physically can have. It's not a line in geometry. The space represents some variable and another variable. But when I look at the slope that's created from this, it has meaning as a mathematical entity. And, and that, that is the biggest tool that we, can, that we can get out of this, is that we get a mathematical entity from this. Alright, um, that's linear functions, and we're going to look at other types of functions shortly.